Good morning, welcome back. It is Friday, September 13th, just after 4 a.m. in the morning. I am grabbing group one, bringing them up into the holding area. Ladies are looking good this morning. We got just under 300 cows to milk this morning, like 295. So uh, we have been milking well over 300, close to 330 for the longest time. She's sleeping. Wakey, wakey, mama. Come on. Come on, ladies. So we took 12 cows from the first group and put them in the second group recently just because we had quite a few less cows in the second group and that makes fitting these cows a lot easier in the holding area. That extra room lets me put the crowd gate down right away as soon as the cows are loaded in. If the holding area is too full, you gotta leave it up, milk a couple lines, come back here, drop it down. This just makes it a lot more convenient for the milker because they can start using that crowd gate while I'm scraping instead of waiting for me to finish scraping and then letting me drop that crowd gate. So just speed things up a little bit. Group's clean, we can let the cows back in. We are all done milking. Just got to clean the parlor yet. We're running the one flush on that side. But uh, our timer went on the ADF system here. If you look at the ADF control box, you'll see this yellow light blinking twice. And that means it's time for the liners to be changed on the milk claws. We have a deal with our dealer. Uh, they come out, they switch the lines. So I'm gonna text the guy, the service guy, and then he knows to come out here and replace those liners. So do that and then we'll get the parlor cleaned off and see what else we get up to today. So I got two heifers, I gotta put collars on this morning in the chute there, they're both sorted. These are the activity collars that we use to monitor if the cows are in heat in the barn. Uh, just go around their neck, but uh, they, each individual transponder has a different code on there. And I gotta enter that into the computer for the cow's ID. So this one will go to 1266 and this one will go to 1343. So I gotta enter that code in their profile on the computer here. Uh, so the way these collars work, pretty cool. They got a battery in there that lasts like, I don't know, five, 10, probably even 15 years. I think, I'm not sure. We've only been using these for like three years now. So they last pretty long, but uh, they go dormant when they don't move at all. And then they get reactivated with the ID system in the sort gate. So whatever signal is shot at the cow's ear tag to see what number is going through the sort gate. Uh, it also, right away at the same time, activates the activity sensors on these collars. And uh, they get turned on again, so I guess they save battery like that. But we're gonna go put these on those two heifers.
Next thing we're going to do today, we're going to take the MX-285 off of the Gia liquid manure tank. We want to put the Bunning manure spreader on the MX-285 here. You see she's missing a wheel. Uh, this thing was having some issues with keeping the air inside of it and it really started to go flat quick once we finished hauling manure. Uh, it would only take a day for it to go completely flat and lose all of its air. So we brought that into the city. It's getting fixed now. So we're going to leave the tank here, but uh, we're going to take the case off there and uh, rip to the other yard, pick up that bonding manure spreader. Got her pulled out of the shed. It's looking good. This really is a good size tractor for this spreader. A lot of guys always say this tractor is pretty small for the liquid manure tank that we're pulling, but uh, this bonding manure spreader is pretty good size for this tractor. Just looks proportionate. So this is our 40 acre alfalfa field. Uh, it's right behind the barn, there's the farm. Dad's dropping it right now, and this is the third cut that we've taken this year. I think I've said before in the past, we only ever really get two cuts off of our alfalfa. Uh, you definitely can usually take a third cut, but uh, you're gonna probably kill the crop. And uh, we realized that there's just not enough time for the plant to build up enough energy to make it through winter if you cut it this late in the season, usually. Uh, there's no guarantees though, this stuff might come up next year, it might not. Uh, it definitely would be fine if we would leave it and not cut it, but this year we've had a tough time getting enough forage and we figured, you know what, uh, we have quite a bit of new alfalfa in the fields, like another 150 acres, that's looking really good. And uh, we figured, you know what, because of that, we need forage this year. Why not take a third cut on this alfalfa? Oh well, if it dies over winter. Uh, it's just too good to leave. There's definitely quite a bit here. And it's looking and smelling great. We're not gonna silage this. We're just gonna let it dry out and we'll hay it. Uh, probably if we don't get any rain three days from now, we'll rake it. And then four days from now, if it's nice, sunny, windy, dry, we'll be able to make some nice round bales out of it and uh, get a little bit of extra feed because this year has been not the greatest for getting feed. So that's why we're taking this. Pretty nice third cut for out here in Saskatchewan, especially with how much rain we got. Also do a quick pack barn expansion update here. They started putting the steel tin on the side of the barn there. I don't know if you guys seen it with the roof. The tin's all on the roof too already. They put the windows in. It's looking great. They've also went ahead and taken the doors out. You can see that overhead door is missing. Taking the rest of the tin off of this wall. And a bunch of that white plastic that's called Delcam. They've been taking that off the inside as well. Just getting ready to take this wall out. It's getting pretty close to that time, I guess. You can really notice that extra two feet in the ceiling here. This roof is quite a bit taller. They framed up where the three exhaust fans are going to go on this side of the door. Still got a little bit to do on that side, but one's going to be on top, two beside each other on the bottom. Apparently the barn ventilation is a lot more efficient when the exhaust fans are on the back wall versus how they're kicking out on the side on the existing pack barn. Uh, we just didn't have another choice because we needed the five doors at the back of that old wall just to get into those manure alleys. But now those alleys are going nicely into this slot here. So we get all this extra room in the wall where we can put those exhaust fans. And that's also a sweet thing about this new pack barn. Still got to do the tie in. You can see how these barns are just going to tie right into each other. It should be pretty neat. And then this is the other side. They got quite a bit of tin on this side as well. And you can see the higher roof here. They also poured around this drain. I don't know if I showed this yet, but there's going to be an insane amount of water coming off of that roof and that roof. And it's all just going to sit in between the barns. 
and there's gonna be four walls on every side of this uh, area here so it's got to drain out somehow so this is probably an eight inch pipe and it all slopes down they got to cut it off yet obviously it's not 100 percent done but that should drain this area out and it goes underneath all this concrete underneath the apron over there and it'll drain out somewhere right next to the lagoon yeah this pack barn is just flying along it's looking great definitely going to be able to put cows in there before it gets really cold out So yesterday we hooked up that Bunning Mirror Spreader to the MX-285 and this is one of our dry cow curls, curl number eight. You can see it's got a big muddy pit in the back there. Cows, they know we can't walk in there. It's like a foot and a half of deep mud. If you walk in there with your boots, you're just going to lose them. And uh, when we got to take close-up cows out of here every single week, they pretty much always go and stand in the middle of that mud pit and don't let us chase them out of the corral and bring them into the calving pack in the barn. It's always a huge struggle, so we figured might as well take a couple loads out of this corral and make it a lot easier for us to grab cows out. So that's what we're doing today. Got the loader there and the tractor ready to go. So that was the first load we just dumped right there. Uh, this is the exact same field that we spread all the liquid manure on. And you can see that crust here pretty good. It's a good crust of liquid manure that was put on here. This field's super sandy and it'll blow really easily. We noble bladed this field as well. So we figured we'll put some manure on here, cover it up. And this ground has also never had manure before. Same with a couple of our other fields, so we figured put it on here really heavy instead of putting manure on the same fields that we always do. Kind of spread it out. Manure has an incredible amount of fertilizer and nutrients in it, and the crops can really utilize that. You're going to get the most bang for your buck if you bring the manure to fields that haven't had that much, and that's what we're doing now. And the field looks pretty light, a little sandy possibly. Uh, that's obviously because the sand from the bedding makes it pretty light. I always get questions, is that the best thing to do? Shouldn't you take the sand out of the manure before you put it on the field? It's going to kind of wreck your topsoil. Uh, probably over 20 years, it would have a pretty big impact. Me and Dad, we've thought about, you know, the consequences of that, and we figured for the first couple of years anyway, it'll be fine. And then maybe, I don't know, five, ten years down the road, we'll figure something else out, a way to maybe take the sand out of the liquid manure before we spread it over the field. 
there's plenty of ways to do that, but uh, gotta build some stuff first, so that's why we haven't done it yet. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.